Hello, welcome back. Happy New Year to you all. Hope you all had a good Christmas, New Year. I certainly did. Took a couple of weeks off. Much needed after last year. <laughs> it's good to be back up here though. Not been here in a while. It's a pretty crisp, cold morning. The uh, stream's kind of burst its banks up the top there. Running quite high down here as well. So, yeah. Nice bit of four-wheel driving in. You may have noticed I've got the chainsaw with me today. Going to be doing um, some Swedish one log fires which I'm uh, quite looking forward to. Uh, I'm going to do it in three, maybe four different ways, I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, I've got some cedar, um, which we took down just before Christmas, and uh, I'm going to get started. Well, for the first Swedish torch, I'm going to use just this quite small one, and this is going to be done with hand tools. I'm going to need my axe, baton, and a saw as well. So I'm going to start off just by splitting this into four quarters. There is a couple of knots at the bottom of this, so we'll see how it goes, but it's got quite a nice straight grain by the looks of it, which is what you want. And just going to place this just off centre. This is just for control. There we go, we've got our two halves. And in half again. And then the other side. Try and keep your bits together because you're going to want them to fit together again. I'll take one of these pieces, this being the top on this side, we're going to go about two thirds down, get our saw. I'll go about halfway through, just to remove that core section, and I'm going to put it back upright and batten that out of it. And you should see there, we've taken out that core, but we've got the core in the bottom more or less, a little bit splintered out there. We're just going to do that for all four. So now as hopefully you can see you've got the four sides which fit together with the hole going through except for a small shelf at the bottom. So we're ready for our next step. Well, we've got two corresponding corners here. And you can see that shelf. And if we turn that around, what you want is just above the shelf a hole. So if we get some of this bark off here. going to 
look for where the shelf is, which is about there. So a bit above that. Just gonna mark it. You just need that mark on both sides there. There we go, there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can do a square or a diamond. I'll probably do more of a, a diamond today. To go together with a nice air hole. So it's time to put this together. Right, so at this point there's a couple of things you can do. You could dig this into the ground to hold it together. You could use some twine which will eventually burn so depending on how flat your surface and the bottom of your log is may not be ideal or you can use some wire. So I'm just going to do that today as I have some with me. It's just florist wire. <laughs> Just going to loop them together and tighten it up. Now your cores that you uh, chipped out, you can keep them and you can use them just to make some fine, fine feathers to uh, get this going. So they're just going to go within the core. I'm just going to break them off so they go in easy. And that's going to help get that fire started. Right, we're just going to start putting some of these feathers and chips inside here. And that's going to be all ready to go. And I'll light them all together when I'm done. So let's move on to the next one. Right, excuse the chainsawing in the background. I can't do a lot about that, but mine will be out soon anyway. <laughs> so for this one, I'm going to use this short stumpy log. I've got a barrel eyed auger here and this is going to be more like a, a rocket stove style of um, Swedish torch. Uh, a bit less traditional but um, hopefully just as effective. I've never tried this before but I've seen it done. So I'm just going to be putting a hole in through the top and one in through the side for air and uh, we'll start it off with fuel just like we do the other one. This is the biggest long auger I've got so hopefully it'll do. Now this is going to come in handy, so don't discard it. Now with some careful aiming, I'm going to go in through the side and try to match up with the other hole. So there's a hole in the side, and there's the one in the top. I've shone my um, torch through it so I know it's definitely connected.
Okay, so we're looking pretty good there. Thickened up the uh, two main lines there just so I can fit in some debris to burn. But that's uh, third one done. Incidentally, if you do buy a Swedish torch, um, you can buy them like this, kind of pre-done, because they can be mass-produced with a chainsaw like that. Right, let's get some uh, tinder. So what do we use to get these started? We've got all your shavings and feathers that you can do with the cores. You've got your shavings and uh, sawdust from using the auger. And uh, I've collected some birch bark as well, just like a paper birch. Um, if not, maybe if you took the tree down, you'd be able to get some fat wood or just some man-made fire lighters, whatever's easiest for you. Just got some long matches with me today. Well, the first two are up and running very well, the chainsaw one and the axe one. This one is immense, <laughs> it's going very well. As expected the auger one, it's going to take a little more to get going uh, because of the small hole. Um, I'll have to get myself a bigger auger, but it will probably burn the longest. Now you can cook on a Swedish torch. Um, it's best not to cut off the airflow though. Now one way is to just raise your pan with a few rocks. Or your kettle. And that allows that airflow to still go. You can tell that's hot. Another way is to just put pieces of wood across, but you can't cook for too long that way. Or you could use some kind of pot stand, like so. And that kettle is almost done. We've had a bit of an accident with the uh, the axe one. And that's because it wasn't perfectly flat and I left it a bit late to put weight on it like that. But if I pick it up, it should just carry on as normal. I said pretty much as it was. I could have put some wire higher up as well, to be honest, but uh, that's fine. It's just a demonstration one. And you can see how efficient it is. It's going again straight away. Don't worry about this floor, it's rained non-stop for a week. <laughs> it's nice. 
nice bacon. And an egg. And no, I didn't forget. I'm going for take two with the tea. Seems a little more balanced now without them stones, that's probably the problem. I didn't put too much effort into finding ones that were evenly sized. But these ones are brilliant. Now the chainsaw one is smouldering away and that will burn like that for a long, long time. I could have put them slits a bit lower to be quite honest, but this was my first time doing this type. What you can do if you want it to flame up, oh, still putting out some heat, is just put some more of that sort of kindling and stuff in there. So as you can see I just put a bit of the core of the other one in there and that's got that going again and the uh, axe one still going. So I hear you saying Andy what happened to the auger torch? It's not going, lighting all three at the same time, cooking, filming, I couldn't give it the attention it needed so I'm going to get back to that one now because I don't want to leave it fouled. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the debris out of here. just to clear it out. The same with the front hole. And I'm going to put a hole in the opposite side. And the second hole missed, but I've had another go. And it looks like we might be up and running. I think just unblocking the holes may have helped a lot. Okay, I can safely say this one is going well now and because of its stability and flat top this would be ideal for actually using stones on to put your uh, pot on. But yeah that is going, that's really feeding through that original hole. As you can see this has stopped flaming and it's not putting out as much heat now, definitely should take them cuts further down but you know live and learn and the axe one is actually still putting out some heat but yeah nearly depleted but as you can see more than enough time to do a meal on so now I can see that's burning very well it's been going for some time now uh, maybe even 40 minutes um, and you can see it's got a lot more time to go it's probably a lot more hollow inside um, like I said, it's burnt through to both holes, so it's getting loads of oxygen now, and it's like a proper rocket stove. Now, I've eaten. I don't need this to burn for another hour, hour and a half. So, I'm going to... Put it out. The auger torch is out now. I'm actually sat on it. <laughs> it's cooled down. The um, axe one, there's a few little bits left, but uh, you know, it's a really good burner, really starts up quick. The um, chainsaw one, uh, definitely take your cuts further down than I did. Um, it's good buried in the ground. You could bury any of these in the ground, to be honest, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, depends how flat your log and your ground is. But um, yeah, that was all a success in the end. The auger one took a little bit, but that was because I was doing 10 things at the same time, really. We did get bacon and eggs. <laughs> Hope you found this interesting. Um, there's other ways of doing these. You can put bundles of sticks together with like a gap in the middle to put some kind of fire starter and things like that. But um, these, I think, are the three main ways. The rocket stove way, 
the Swedish axe made um, torch and the um, chainsaw made one which is more of a commercial way of doing it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it's good to be back. Should be camping this weekend and uh, I'll see you on that one. Goodbye for now.